So welcome everybody. If you're watching this Facebook Live, uh, just know that it's one of my firsts, <laughs> uh, but also definitely first in a, a new series of videos called the Entre Entrepreneur Interviews. Um, so these interviews um, are going to be coming to you, kind of featuring various entrepreneurs who are making an impact in the world around them in one way or another, whether they're teachers or authors or they're giving back to the community or a combination of all of that. Um, and just to introduce myself, I'm Jennifer Goulden. I own Entourage Media and Marketing. Uh, which is based in Waterloo Region. And I'm lucky enough that I get to work alongside some of my favorite businesses um, right here in Waterloo, as well as across North America. Um, my goal basically on the day-to-day -day is to help entrepreneurs uh, shape shift from where they are right now, which is often they need more sales, they need more leads, uh, they need more balance, they need more results, more time um, from where they want to be and where they know that they are, are destined to go. Um, so I play a tiny little part in that and that kind of is what gets me excited to wake up every morning. I also run the Entrepreneur Life uh, community, which is based in KW, but sort of applies to everybody. Um, it's all about entrepreneurs and the people who love the challenges and, and the frustrations and the wins and the losses and the craziness that goes along uh, with building your empire and uh, making an impact on the world around you. Um, so I guess what the reason why I love working with entrepreneurs um, is they're just a different kind of person. And Cheryl's actually one of these people. Um, they're the kind where you can call them at Friday, Friday at like eight o'clock at night and you've got an idea and you'll be on, all of a sudden you'll be on Facebook, uh, messenger chat or video and you'll be brainstorming for a couple hours over a glass of wine and next thing you know, you've got this huge project or event or, you know, you've got it all figured out, right? Uh, so those are my people. Um, and I'm lucky to call Cheryl a friend and, and a coworker, and she's one of these people for sure. Cheryl Clough, um, video marketing strategist. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Jen. I can't <laughs> agree more. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, we are a different breed, I think. But you know what I think is interesting, you know, for me, at least personally, I mean, I'm not sure that I, uh, I think I always had a little seed of that inside of me. But there was a time where I was pretty comfortable being an employee. You know, I, I was comfortable doing that because it was safe. Um, but I think for entrepreneurs, there always is that little bit of a seed that's kind of maybe deep inside that we push down that at some point has to kind of come up and flourish a little bit. And I feel like that's what's happened to me in the last uh, five or six years. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think there is something to be said. Um, some people are just born with that, that kind of that gut instinct to kind of go out and do something on your own. And, you know, it just depends on where in your life you're, you're able to or you want to embrace it. And sometimes you can do that within a job, you know, taking on projects and, and such. But there's nothing like uh, kind of building your own empire, is there? You know what I think I love about it is, is it's this idea of building something from nothing, which is interesting because even in my professional career as a TV broadcaster, which is where I spent 25 years uh, of my life, <laughs> uh, we are largely creating something from nothing, like in terms of content, in terms of filling up, you know, a, a TV station network, you know, with content 24 seven. And so there was a parallel between my professional career and what I do now. But I think we are creatives. We want to be able to, like you said, you know, get on the phone at eight o'clock and conceptualize something and then make it happen. And we're, we want to hustle for lack of a better term, right? And kind of make those things happen and make something from nothing. Absolutely. And you've gone from uh, a big corporate national broadcasting uh, job, which uh, had you working crazy hours and probably kind of took away, took you away from your family and that sort of thing. And now you're writing your own paychecks and setting your own hours. So what, what gave you kind of the push to do that? Was it like, was it out of necessity? Uh, were you just, had you just had it or was it just, you couldn't help but give up this great idea you had? Well, I, I think there's always been a little entrepreneurial seed inside of me, but I will say that, there was a time when I was working at, I was working at the Weather Network and we had an annual meeting. Like every year, 
the CEO would call an annual meeting and we would all get together, 400 of us or so, and listen to the state of the union of, you know, what's going on in the company. This is a big company, revenue, hundred million plus, you know? And, uh, and I remember one time going to the meeting and there was a heavy, heavy push on digital and all of us in the TV team, we're all sitting together, looking at each other going, Oh, they don't seem to be investing too much in TV. <laughs> so what's that? What does that mean for us? And all, everything was going toward digital. He even said so on stage. And and something inside of me switched at that moment where I was like, hmm, maybe I want to be on the side of digital. <laughs> so that's what sparked it a little bit for me. And then uh, a whole series of other events kind of happened. And then I just was really determined to transition out of television and be on the positive side of where the world was going. Sorry. And you I have think I lost I think I just muted myself. It's all good. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> but you also have young children, don't you, at home? Yeah. Well, we have we have one son, and uh, and you know he's he's only ever known <laughs> actually both his mom and dad. He's only ever known his mom and dad as being on TV. Like for him, that was normal to turn on. It's funny. I saw a picture just yesterday. Uh, I think it was on Facebook memories and it's a picture of my son sitting on a chair just over here at the cottage, look, watching me on TV uh, years and years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was really sweet. But you know, he and my, my husband also is a longtime TV broadcaster who's just retired from CTV. And so he's used to seeing his mom and dad on TV. Now he's just used to seeing uh, at least his, his, you know, mom is still on the screen, just a different <laughs> screen, YouTube, Facebook, <laughs> now TikTok, you know, so, um, but the yes, TikTok part is my favorite. Isn't it? I mean, I, I'm not going to dance just yet. I got to learn them, but oh, come on, you got to do know, he, I know at some point I will have to, <laughs> but my son, you know, he, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a long period of time where he really wasn't seeing his mom all that much. And I really got determined to transition from television so I could spend more time and, and really be home-based, be able to have breakfast with Brody. I used to have this, uh, I still have it somewhere. It's a Bristol board that I made for myself, kind of like a vision board. And I wrote on it, breakfast with Brody. And that was my driving force for years. I kept that in my closet. Every time I, you know, it's five o'clock in the morning as I'm pulling on my clothes to go to the station, I would look at that and say, that's what I'm doing this for. I want to have breakfast with Brody. That's amazing. That's, that's so good. And to have your vision in front of you all the time is, I, I always say that I'm going to do that. And I never do. Um, because many entrepreneurs like myself are a little bit of a procrastinator, big ideas, little on actually implementing them. <laughs> um, but I love that just keeping keeping the, the end site in mind and, and like why you're doing this and why you uh, invest all, all this time and energy into, you know, your business. So, okay, so yeah. if it's okay, kind of walk me through it a bit. So you obviously had a big following because you were a television broadcaster. So your network would have been pretty large already. Um, but when you go into business for yourself, I mean, now you're not talking about the weather. Um, so you're, you're pitching this new, this new concept. Um, how, how did you go about getting followers and kind of getting that word out and making the shift? Because it's almost like a personality shift as well. Um, how did you kind of approach that from the beginning? I think from the beginning, I didn't really focus too much on that, actually. Okay. I really knew, I knew that the people who were following me were following me for an entirely different reason. Uh, that the audience that I needed to build way back when was around, initially it was actually health, health and health coaches because that was where it kind of started from. And then it morphed and moved into something else and moved into something else to the point where we are now, which is really coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, small business owners, people who are building a brand or who have their own products and services that they're selling. And um, so that was an evolution. But I don't think in the early stages that I really focused all that much on the numbers and things like that. I have just got hyper focused on content creation like that. I really knew that I had because. See, I came, I came from broadcasting, so I already knew the model. And, mm -hmm. and here's the thing, Jen, I think it's interesting. The model is the same pretty much for television, network TV, uh, broadcasting, as it is in, in the world we live in, in entrepreneurship, because think of this. How so? 
So? We have to create, well, but because we have to create content, right? So you've got two streams. You've got the broadcast world over here. You're creating content, you're building an audience, and then you're monetizing that audience. It happens to be that in broadcasting, you do that through mostly advertising. On this side of things, it's the same model. Create content, build an audience, and monetize that in, in whatever way you want. So I already knew going into this that that was going to be the key was it's always, it always stems from content. That's where it always stems. So I didn't really focus all that much on the numbers or audience um, building from a metrics or vanity kind of standpoint. At right. the beginning, I was just hyper-focused on building the skill set, creating the content, doing it even though I didn't really entirely know what I was doing. Keep in mind, I was <laughs> always the on part. camera talent the talent, talent, that's what they call us, right? Talent mm -hmm. uh, in front of the camera is one thing. That's one skill set. And I had that dialed in, but I did not really know how to create and produce videos necessarily from the back end. Like I didn't, I, I'm a myself taught editor and, I'm, and now I'm whipping up videos like nobody's business, but that yeah. wasn't the case back when. My first videos were horrible. <laughs> they were like green, huh. blue, what, blah, right? But I did it anyway, even though I faced potential ridicule. I faced potential, you know, industry people going, she doesn't know what she's doing. All of those fears were definitely there. But um, I, I just persevered and I focused on content creation. And how do you get past that? Because that's probably, I mean, we all should be doing video. I should, I should be doing way more videos than I am. Um, and, and I think we all know that we should be doing it. We watch you teach us and, um, you know, we're like, okay, I'm going to do that. But then the voices in your head say, what if this person from my past or whatever looks at this and says, you know, she's a, she's an imposter, the imposter syndrome, right? Um, or, you know, yeah. I look bad or, you know, my kitchen is messy or, or whatever it is, or the dogs are bark, you know, like there's so many things that can be a roadblock between, um, just really getting out there and then doing these videos. Like, how do you combat that? What do you tell your clients? Well, I just spend one week in television. <laughs> you. <laughs> you, you, you know, like you, you have to have a very thick skin. You, right. you know how many, do you know how many letters um, would come in? And thankfully for us at the Weather Network, we had a department who got, uh, you know, if, if people wrote letters or emails like in later years, emails, would come in and say, oh, I don't like what she's wearing. I don't like her hair. She's too fat. This is it, blah, blah, blah. Oh my like, God. All of, these derog all of these derogatory things. Well, it wasn't just that. Sometimes we'd get praise. Sometimes we would get letters that said, you know, we love, you know, Kim or Jacqueline or Cheryl or Suzanne, you know, like, so there were both sides of it. But I guess the point being that you have to have a thick skin. Like, let's be real, you know, perfectionism, we all suffer from perfectionism. Everybody wants to, you know, everybody's striving to have things be as good as they can be. You know, we want to, um, you know, do the best we can. But I think there's a big difference between that, like that sense of perfectionism that holds you back and then wanting to put your best foot forward. Um, and that's all you have control over. You only have right. control over putting your best foot forward. There is no, you know, if you're striving for perfection, you'll be waiting forever. I mean, you have to yeah. take imperfect action. It's just that simple, but it is really about having a thick skin. And I think it's all about having, you know, again, that why or the drive or the determination, yeah. you've got to dig deep. You've got to want it because there are people who will want to, um, to tear you down. Uh, but there are also people who support you. And I think personally, I believe there are more people who want to support you than there are people who want to tear you down. It just so happens that as human beings, we tend to focus more on the people who want to tear us down. That's just human nature. That is. It's almost like, um, I wonder if you could almost apply um, stage fright uh, methods against it. Like I sing sometimes. And one of my uh, biggest challenges was like petrifying stage fright. I would inhale. And then I wouldn't be able to exhale. And I basically had to do the whole song without breathing because I was so, I was just so <laughs> scared. Um, but kind of what helped me was I would picture um, someone who I know is supportive. Like I would picture my mom in the audience or my daughter or something. And they'd be, because they yes. would be the ones going, yeah, mom, even if you mess up, you know, they'd be like, oh, it's good, you know. And I kind of pretend I'm talking 
to that person or singing to that person. And it takes the edge off a little bit. I mean, things still happen, but um, yeah, I wonder if maybe we all just did a little bit more of that. Just talk to the people you love because they're the ones that uh, will be cheering on the other end of that video, right? Well, and, and that is really what we do in broadcasting. You know, broadcasters get on you know, we have like TV studios and broadcast cameras and all of this stuff around us and can be intimidating. I but bet. what you do is you focus on the lens and you focus on one person, right? That high mom method is what I, I, I call it. And I heard that term before too. Like high mom method is this concept of hi mom. I'm telling you a story right now. I'm talking to you. I love one person. That. And that's yes. the same. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with what we do now with content creation. If you're making videos, uh, that you're talking to that lens as one singular person. And right. when you can trick your mind and, and, and the thing is that video is completely unnatural, right? Uh, in the sense that we are talking to an inanimate object. <laughs> and so it is weird, right? People get all weirded out over it. I get that. It makes sense. Why wouldn't it be weird? Because you're talking to yeah. a lens. The, the yeah. trick of it is to not think of it as a lens, that you're thinking of it as a person and one of the biggest mistakes that I see people do in video is they will start the video and say, hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, all everybody out there. And, I'm pretty and sure I did isn't that. isn't a way to build connection. <laughs> did you? I think so. I'll go back and watch the recording. And if you okay. did. We'll just edit that part kidding. out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you did, but listen, but here's the thing. So what, right? You did it. And now you just heard what I said about that. And so maybe next time you do it, you might think of it differently. So there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's like, this right. is the process of learning. It's the process yeah. of, of making progress of progress over perfection. So right. if you did do that at the beginning of this live, okay, cool. But now yeah. maybe next time you'll maybe not do that. So it, it's all yeah. about progress, but thinking about massive that imperfect that action, I think can help. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so true. I know that's really, uh, that's, a, that's a hurdle, but, but you just, I mean, I think in today's landscape, because everybody is an entrepreneur, and even the ones who um, aren't or wouldn't have thought that they are, COVID-19 has sort of forced them to um, come up with other ways to make money if they, you know, lost their jobs or they're laid off or whatever. So basically, uh, the majority of people are doing something um in business for themselves uh whether it's mlm or or distributorships or building their empires um you know it all it all applies so and the thing about that yeah. is that we're all in our houses like right now uh, the dog i can't believe the dogs haven't started barking yet um usually somebody's running a lawnmower outside the window and i'm trying to shoot a video or record a song um but that's authentic right that's that's what normal life is and if your son goes through the back because uh, he's on the way to the beach then you know that's how it is and it's okay to be uh not exactly perfect and plastic you know what i mean yeah well you know it's it's funny because you mentioned covid 19 i think what's going to happen and what you're going to see more of is this want and craving and desire for authenticity on a higher higher level I think we've just expedited that, that whole want and desire by about five years because it was already happening. That shift was already happening before COVID-19, this idea Absolutely. of, I want to see you in your real environment. I want to see you at home. I want to see the real you. But now yeah. that we've seen Jimmy Fallon at home and Ellen at home and all these high level celebrities doing a, a show, full shows from home yeah. and seeing them in our, their authentic environments, it's become normal now. And I think we're going to see continued shift um, and, and really just more of that. So Absolutely. now more than ever, you have permission, which is great, right? This mm. permission to be yourself. And yeah, yeah. If, if Brody ran by the back, I'd be like, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, <laughs> well, it's life. It, yeah. um, we're at the cottage. I mean, so mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that this idea of the corporate veil, the wall of, you know, corporate scripted, I'm reading from a teleprompter, promotional, blah, 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 is out the window. Um, people want you to speak from the heart, say what you mean, provide value and be authentic. Absolutely. And, and that all goes into what you're doing and what you're teaching. 
Um, obviously, you've always been a speaker, you know, broadcasting must have led to speaking or, you know, maybe the other way around. Um, but I've always found when I listen to you that it sounds like you're kind of a teacher at heart as well. Um, so when it comes to uh, video marketing, uh, what does that mean? And what do you offer um, small businesses who say just need more leads, more sales, more uh, maybe just more followers. They need to make connections with people that maybe in the future they'll do business with. How do you sort of approach that? Yeah, I always, again, my title, video strategist. So it always starts with a strategy. You do have to have some idea and it may be something that is, that, that evolves over time. That the strategy that you have today might be different in six months. It might be different again in a year. It is a working document that you, um, and a working roadmap that you have so that you know where you're going with it. Because here's the thing, social media is a really big part of what I do. It's not everything, but a big part of what I do. And as we know, social media changes all the time. So we have to be able to work with that. But it always, Jen, does start from a strategy. So one thing that we uh, do is, and I like to do it visually, because I'm a visual person. I think most people like to see it visually. But I will work with a client and mind map it. Like we will map it out on, a, on, a, on an actual document with little icons to show what we're doing by choosing, okay, what's the core platform? Where does it stem from? What is your going to be your main content that you create consistently at least a minimum every week? Um, and we start from there. And then we start to expand that out to repurpose that in a variety of different ways, depending on a lot of factors that are going on for that entrepreneur. So it's customized, right? Depends on, do you have a team? Where, who are your clients? Where are they hanging out? What are your offers? What are you trying to do? You know, what are your skill set? What, what do you want to develop? You know, the, all kinds of different things come into play. But that's one of the things that we do is we start at that strategic level of figuring out where's, where does it stem from and how do we redistribute that? Because the, I work mostly with solopreneurs, small business owners who are wearing all the hats. Right. Not, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not the person, I'm not the person you come to if you've already got a team of 10 people and you're making $100 million a year, right? Um, if you are that person, you've already got it so, sorted out. If you're Gary V, you're good to go. Right. Um, I'm the person who's filling that gap for all, the, all of the entrepreneurs who are you know, at the first, second, or maybe approaching uh, the third level of their business, but, uh, but they need solutions to getting their, con their message out to more people through video. And then a lot of this has to do with repurposing and being smart and efficient about how we do that. Right. That's amazing. And you've been putting out, you've been doing this for two years. Um, is that right? I well, want to say too, it was yeah, right I around mean, the time of my accident. Yeah, I've been at this uh, since February of 2017, full time. Ooh. Like February, February 2017 was when I left my broadcasting job and career uh, to do this full time. So a little, little bit over three years. Mm -hmm. And I have loved every minute of it. You know, it's been, it's just been a blast. But you know, the truth is, even for what I do, things have evolved. And the truth is, COVID-19 is made, it, it's it definitely impacted what I do and the direction that I want to go because I see the, the need that people have and I'm very good at being able to go with that and, and I'm a good listener. I'm, I like to observe what's going on. Um, I think that comes from my journalistic background, but I also have morphed into really kind of we're moving more into almost like a boutique um, agency model in that sense. V virtual video production is our main thing that we're doing now going forward. And that is we interview clients on Zoom, actually, uh, interview clients on Zoom. And then from their interviews and from their sound bites, we actually create their videos for them and distribute it out on social media. So, you know, this is um, what, the, what entrepreneurs really kind of need now. And of course, we live in a virtual world. Everyone wants to do things digitally. So that's the direction that we're going. Right. Right. It's definitely where it's at now, for sure. And everybody wants an inside peek uh, of what, who people really are. So if you're going to do marketing, I know that, you know, introduction videos um, that are actually, you know, real on a website, for example, can go a long way because it, then they're not, it's not the typical sales landing page. It actually 
kind of gives you a viewpoint of who you would be working with if you hired that person. So I really like yeah. that. Well, I, I think, I think what's happening with marketing in general is that we're going back to basics and that we're moving away from the complexity of these gigantic funnels and all the tons of automation. I'm not saying we don't need systems or we don't need some sort of form of automation, but just to the level that we've gone to. Uh, in fact, that was what my YouTube video was uh, this morning <laughs> that I just posted, but. Oh, uh, I haven't seen it yet. You know, <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go watch it. So it's this concept of like getting, going back to basics and moving away and forgetting about the complexity of these big, huge funnels and spending all of our time doing that at the expense of not doing the things we should be doing, which is talking to people, making creating connections. content, connecting with, ma making connections. Yeah. We're so like head down, creating the funnel, creating the funnel that we're forgetting to do the things that are actually going to move the business and build your brand, which always starts from strategically creating content. Well, the thing today is um, there's so many teachers. Uh, sometimes it wonder, I wonder if we're all afflicted by that. Everyone's teaching and nobody's listening. Um, you yeah. know, and then you get the yeah. shiny object syndrome. So you're scrolling through Facebook and there's uh, like a hundred ways to get 10 sales right this second if you apply this app. And, you know, there's just so many things. And I have signed up for every single one of them, I swear to God. Um, since COVID started, I've done nothing but online courses and webinars and just investing in my own education, but also falling prey to some of the shiny object syndrome as well. Um, so, you know, I mean, a lot of it is good because that's obviously how I found you uh, back in the day as I saw one of your videos or something like that and I was hooked. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it's kind of, you have to balance, right? You have to know where yeah. to start and where to stop. It's, I don't think that what you've described is necessarily a bad thing. I think that with COVID-19, you know, there was, there it was actually a really good time to invest in yourself and finish the courses you've already bought that are sitting in your inbox. And <laughs> yeah, open. exactly. Or buying the course, right? Buying the course that, that you need to develop that skill set. I think that that's a great, that was a good season to do that. But yeah. the problem becomes people stay in that state and then they never take the actions. They just are, they just want to learn, learn, learn because it's the safe place to be rather than putting themselves out there. So yes, you have to, you know, you have to see them, these things in seasons almost and not, and recognize that, oh gee, am I getting caught in quicksand here? Like, am yeah. I getting caught in this? And it's funny you, you mentioned about the shiny object syndrome and the Facebook thing because in buying all these different things, you might have been a fly on the wall when I was creating my video for YouTube today because I talk exactly about that, Jen. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny you said that. Well, we but often um, share a it, brain, it seems, these days uh, with our video yes, ideas. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think so. So, yeah, you know what? It, like, listen, we all, I'm a lifelong learner too. I love, you know, right yeah. now I'm reading uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan again. Um, oh, great. Uh, I what was that again? I love it was that. called the one thing the one thing okay. the one thing yeah it's a great book um gary keller of, of keller williams real estate um okay. and then j and yeah it's a great book to read and so um i love that i also love uh, dr wayne dyer uh you know uh so it, it just podcasts i'm always learning but i'm just getting into action. podcasts Oh, oh yes. Oh my gosh. I have a podcast. Like I, I repurpose my videos into a podcast. Actually, um, I was thinking of doing that with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that absolutely can do that. I do that every right. week. So awesome. uh, that's why I'm on Spotify and iTunes and all this. But that's again, amazing. it comes back to having systems. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you want to be learning. Yes. You want to be ingesting and consuming content to a point, but at some point you've got to start taking action. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They just get, it's comfortable to stay listening and, and learning and consuming as opposed to the things that are scarier to do, which is to get out on that stage and sing or to, you know, exactly. make that video or say, you know, share your point of view. Those are the scarier yeah. things to do, but anything worth um, having is, is pretty scary. Well, in singing, um, if you don't, if you don't ever uh, brave, you know, that challenge, that hump and get out there on, on the stage, you're basically, we call it a professional rehearser. So you're just rehearsing. That's your profession. You never actually 
get on the stage. So it definitely applies to a lot of different things, doesn't it? Um, okay. Can so, I tell you a quick story? Can yeah, I, absolutely. Can I tell you a quick story about singing? Yeah. So when I was, is it going oh, on TikTok? Know, 18. No, no, this <laughs> is going back in time. When I was 18, I was a contestant in uh, what then what then was called beauty pageants. <laughs> um, now I don't know if they even exist anymore, but I was a contestant in this contest and there was a talent portion. And I was like, I, I, again, you know, looking back on my, you know, my childhood and my teen years, like we were poor and social assistants, like we didn't have anything. So right. I didn't have any, like I didn't, wasn't uh, taking piano lessons and dancing, like none of that. So I was like, I don't have a talent. What am I going to do? My mom said, why don't you sing? And I said, are you kidding me? Like, I don't sing. So we had a karaoke machine and, you know, with the two cassette tapes side by side. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah. But I went and got um, Madonna's, Madonna's La Isla Bonita. Track, oh, geez. We just I lost sang, all the millennial oh, watchers right there. <laughs> they don't have a clue. They have no <laughs> idea. I got on stage in front of 500 people at that contest and sang. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. Scariest thing I've ever done was get in front of, when those big curtains opened, I was like, ah. <laughs> and, I sang and I ended up winning. I won the talent competition and I won the whole competition. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so who knew? So you missed your calling. I guess you should be singing intros and outros for your, for your videos. <laughs> Trust me, no. No, I'm going to be watching no. your TikTok for that. <laughs> <laughs> but the point, the point is that even at that age, right. Um, I knew that these were things I needed to do to uh, get out of a certain situation or break free from a circumstance that I was in. Right. Um, and so you may be finding right now, if you're an entrepreneur, that you're in a circumstance or you're in a hole or you're in the quicksand, you've got to do the things that are scary. Yeah. Yeah. There's truth to uh, everything you want is on the other side of your fear, for sure. Um, I mean, that's not to say that you have to do crazy things all the time, but little bits, you know, you can, you can take little yeah. steps. Maybe I will overcome the fear of doing a live Facebook interview this week and maybe next week, you know, I will do something else, whatever yeah. it is. Um, yeah. But just little tiny baby yeah. steps, right? One at a time, as opposed to conquering the world all at once. Yeah. And which is funny because we are Facebook living this and I have no idea actually how to even uh, check the comments or, or view it. So this is all a learning game. <laughs> so okay. You're just going to go back and, fine. and take a look. We will. And maybe you can go through them too in case there's questions for you. <laughs> we'll figure sure. it out. Yeah. I will for sure. That's awesome. So you, what is your favorite, your favorite podcast? If you had to recommend like an entrepreneur business related or even mindset related podcast, what, what, what kind of gets you going? Ooh. Uh, there, there are a couple Tricky question. I, I, I know. Sorry. Gary, I, yeah, I know. I love Gary V's audio experience. You know, okay. Gary Vaynerchuk is one yeah. person I listen to a lot. I really love Amy Porterfield marketing made easy. Yes, uh, she's podcast. amazing. She's, she's great. I love Angie Lee. I mean, again, you asked me to say one, but I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, I love Angie yeah. Lee. I love Shalene Johnson. I, I mean, yeah, the list goes on. I mean, uh, there are a lot of really amazing entrepreneurs out there who are doing awesome uh, work in the podcast world. Um, mm -hmm. But those are some that come to mm -hmm. my mind. Okay. And um, if you had to choose uh, just an app or two that you kind of use in your business, like I know you use Calendly um, to schedule because you connect with your clients all the time. You'll do free 20 minute calls and all sorts of stuff. Um, so is there a, like a handful of apps that you think were kind of a big game changer for you that has just made your life simple or made your business grow at all? It could be video well, I mean, editing. I, my two... Yeah, yeah. My favorite video editing apps are Video Shop and InShot. Those okay. are my two favorite video editing apps. Uh, but other than, I mean, Canva. Canva. Uh, I think Canva is is essential. I really I think yet. it's essential for anyone. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, because right? you don't need um, to be a designer. So I love, exactly. And so all of my YouTube thumbnails are made in Canva. And I, I love that it has, a, I have the pro version. So, but you can get a free account. 
So I love that. Um, I would say, uh, and not necessarily, these are not necessarily just apps, but just tools like Zoom, I think is essential for me. I have to have Zoom. I have to have Canva. Um, I do want I, those video editing apps that I mentioned. I use Camtasia, which is my desktop editing software. Okay. Um, I, I'm a Kajabi lover. So Kajabi <laughs> is the is the best thing I've ever done. Um, it's everything all in one, actually, isn't just, it? It's all in one. You, you go watch today's video on YouTube is you, well, you'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all about that. Um, so, <laughs> but I, I think that I think it's, here's what I, what I've been really striving for in the last year or so streamline. It used to be that I had like 8,000 different things. And then what I realized was I could start getting rid of some of those things by bringing things under one umbrella. So that's why um, I'm really passionate about that because what happens in this world of, you know, entrepreneurship and all of that is that we end up with so many subscriptions, so many things, so many tools, and then we got to learn how to use them and integrate them and all of that. And that takes us away from the core things we need to be doing to move the business forward. So, and for you, um, but I would it, say Canva. For you, that's YouTube, right? You've just, that's your core platform. Yeah, it is now. It, yeah. it wasn't always the case, but it is now. Jen, I have gained over, I think it's 7.7 thousand subscribers in 90 days. Awesome. And you're making On real YouTube. money off of ad revenue. As ad a bonus is, is now because I'm monetized and that's great as a little, little bonus, $4,000 bonus. That's nice. Um, it's like because free money. I've had some videos that have had a lot of views, right? I've got, mm -hmm. it's free money. Um, but it, again, it's like, it's a different revenue model. Um, but it's, it's in, a little bit of a bonus thing there, but YouTube is a key thing. I mean, really, key, you know, um, YouTube, Facebook, I'm on, all, I'm on all the social platforms, but YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, which I'm now <laughs> starting to do, um, you know, these apps are essential, especially if you're driving a lot of things from your phone, right? right. You, if you're going to be um, using an iPad or an iPhone, I am an Apple girl, mm -hmm. you want to have apps so that it makes your life easier. Some other things that we use like Airtable, ClickUp, Dubsado, I mean, there's a few other things that we use in the business on the back end, but in terms of the front facing content side of things, I would say Canva, those video editing apps that I mentioned, um, and then the social platforms and Kajabi. But that's amazing. And if people um, wanted a list of those, the apps that you just mentioned, um, maybe they could just put their email address in the comments um, yeah. of the Facebook live, yeah. and then you could kind Pretty of sure. send them a little note um, um, for that. That'd yeah. be great. Cause uh, yeah, that makes well, life actually, a lot easier. I actually have a number. If, if anyone wants to text me, just text me, uh, just text me. I'll put the number under this video, but if you text me at two, two, six, uh, nine, one, seven, two, zero, three, eight, um, I will just flip you the, you know, the, I'll just type it out and I'll just text it to you and I'll just text you all the stuff that I just mentioned. So two, two, six, nine, one, seven, two, zero, three, eight. Just text okay. me. Yeah, and Cheryl's one of the few uh, professionals that she's all she makes herself available in person, well, by a text, um, when you need her. So you, when you actually use that number, you're you're getting Cheryl, not uh, not the office or or an yeah. assistant or anything. It's coming right to my phone. Yes, it's yeah. coming right to my phone. That's fantastic. I don't know how you do it because I know you've got a fair number of clients. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's so yeah. much fun. Like this, this is what I live for, right? This is what I love to do. I love, I love to help people and, and let, let's not get it twisted, Jen. I mean, that, that is also my business model. Like, you know, um, but I am absolutely prepared to, to, uh, you know, give as much content and, and goodwill up ahead, you know, up front. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, there is going to be a small that. proportion of people yeah, who are like, hey, I want to go to the next level. Great. We've got things that can help you. But that, you know, this is just what I do. I mean, I just genuinely love to help people. And anyone who's ever interacted with me knows that. Yes. Um, but I just love to be able to, it's like, try this, do that. I want to motivate. Yes. I want to educate. I want to inspire people to get out there and build the brand that they want, be able to have the business and life that they love. And, um, and, and, and I, I have that now. Um, and still growing, 
right? I don't have it yes. all dialed in. I don't, I'm not perfect by any means. And none of and us do, which is growing. the best part. We're all kind of um, yeah. <clears throat> collaborating and growing together, um, you know, and it, it just makes everything better, doesn't it? We're all in it together. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Um, so uh, you are available um, to, like clients can reach you a number of different ways. So um, in, for the most part, you interact with your clients in three different ways. One is your Wednesday, um, here, run that through, <laughs> run it, Train. run through that. For sure, me. I'll, I'll fill in the blank. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. so every, every, every Wednesday I do a free live training slash coaching and, um, and there's always some time for Q&A at the end. And so uh, this is something that you can register for. I conduct it on Zoom. So it's zoom.cashinoncamera.com is where you go to register. It's free. It's weekly at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And what I do is I, ca I come with a lesson of the week, uh, like a theme of the week. And I teach on that. And then we have some Q&A and can answer questions or what have you. So it's interactive, interactive, but I do it on Zoom so that we see each other and we can interact. But I also broadcast that like how you're doing right now, I broadcast that out to my Facebook group. So I do that every single Wednesday and you can register for that. When you register, you just get, you know, friendly reminders, you get the link, you know, so we just want to um, help make this as easy as possible for you to join and, and be able to get that free coaching. And we, and access we free need resources. those, we need those reminders because, and I get them from you um, just because we're all on zoom and we have so many meetings and it's not that, and if we miss it, it's not that we weren't interested. It's just that, you know, there was another meeting that came up ahead of it or whatever. So having the email reminders definitely uh, is the only reason I'm yeah. able to attend. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we are, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this through zoom. It allows for more interactivity and allows me to really take that Facebook live concept kind of to the next level kind of like what we're doing here. And so um, I love that. I love to interact. Q and A is one of my favorite things to do and I love to teach. So, so that's been going really, really well. I'm getting, great response. I know Jen, you've been on a couple of them already. And so yes. that's been a great thing that, that we've been doing. And then the second thing I guess is to, you know, again, back to strategy. One thing we'll do with clients is book a 60 minute call to be able to have me go in and do a little digital audit on you, um, get some quick wins, uh, map out your strategy, give you the map, like map it out and then give you that map so that you can save awesome. that on your computer or wherever you want to save that. Um, and then with the uh, remaining time in that hour, we can start doing a variety of different things, but some momentum building things for your specific business. Um, and that's something that you can also uh, check in on at workwithcheryl.com, workwithcheryl.com, and you'll see the details of that 60 minute implementation call. And you actually <clears throat> are going to be working with my company, Entourage, a little bit um, as we cook up our shape-shifting days uh, where we take entrepreneurs um, in terms of marketing uh, from kind of A to Z from where they are now, more lead, they need more leads, more sales, more results to where they want to be in as much as we can pack into one day as possible. And you're one of the shape-shifting experts for that. So we haven't kicked that off yet, but it's going to be amazing. And I'm so excited that you're on the team. Yeah, I'm really happy to be part of your entourage. Uh, to be able to help on the video side of things. And that's an exciting um, endeavor, obviously, for, for you and for your company and something that's really needed, you know, really, really needed right now that, like you said, that whole day long approach. Um, and that's why, you know, I'm doing a, a day long thing specific to the video too, because I think what that, what people are seeing right now is they just need that more in depth um, yeah. type they of, need to of deep workshop dive. type style. They need to deep dive because yeah. what's happened, I think, is a lot, there's a lot of surface things, but then it's like at some point you have to deep dive into it. You can't just keep consuming three minutes of this, three minutes of that, and that's all great. But at some point, you've got to dive deeper into the situation and really get some action, take some action and get some done. <laughs> and you have an incredible event that does actually just that. It's coming up in two weeks or one week, um, uh, virtually. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it on July 20th, July 20th, okay. 2020, uh, for those who are watching this replay sometime in the future, uh, July 20th, <laughs> 2020, um, and it's from 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can um, text me, again, I can send you the link or what have you, but this is um, 
our way of being able to deep dive into my 4P framework, which is how do you plan, how do you produce, how do you publish and promote your video content. So this gives us a whole day of being able to really deep dive into those things and get some action taken. Uh, and it's, it's going to be, I think, it's going to be really momentum building for people who are on that workshop because we have exercises and breakouts. Right. It is being conducted on Zoom. It is virtual. But it's but still hands-on, isn't definitely it? Definitely very much so. That's yes. the best part. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and the cost of that is? $47. Okay, for the whole day. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That'll be great. And that's, of course, in lieu of an event you were going to be doing at the, um, the uh, uh, Welper. Yes, in the, um, you were going to have a yeah. whole weekend. And we were, there, you had lots of people all excited for that. And then COVID hit. I know. COVID yeah. hit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen, listen, everything has shifted, right? Uh, we, we, I, still, I still intend to do that three-day live in-person event. But at this point, and we thought, we tried a bunch of different things over the last yeah. few months to try to make it happen this year. But then clearly, as things really developed in the whole COVID story, it was not going to happen. So we pushed yeah. it now to 2021. Um, that, that's definitely on the back burner. Uh, the, the live in-person part is on the back burner. So really, yeah. the focus for 2020 is going to be to conduct these virtual events and to be able to help people through that means. Because we can't. I mean, you need help now. You don't need, you know, we right. need to find ways to help you now. So, so we're doing these Especially virtual events now. in lieu like, of that. Yeah. More yeah, now than ever. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's true. a must attend for sure. Yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing. So that's July 24th, you said? Uh, uh, July 20th. 20th. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, July 20th. Yeah. July 20th. And, uh, Text me or find me online, DM me. I'll send you the link. Um, happy, happy to do that. But yeah, it's definitely going to be, um, it's going to be a great event. And we don't, we don't, we're not looking to have, you know, it's not going to be an event with 500 people or anything no. like that. There still will be, and it wouldn't work there will still if it be was. an intimate group. Yeah, we need, we just want an intimate group of people who are really like, hey, I just need to get some momentum going here with the videos. What do I do? follow this 4P framework. It's exactly what I do every single week. This is how I've gotten the 7.7 thousand subscribers in 90 days. This is how I've generated the money and like, you know, all of this stuff and get the leads and people who just find me on YouTube and then become clients pretty much like sometimes within hours, right? So awesome. it works. It is a lead generation mm -hmm. uh, strategy, uh, mm -hmm. but it's also a content strategy. It's so much more but that's what we're going to be covering through that whole full day. Yeah. And it's important to note that, um, yes, you do make money off of YouTube. However, um, the ad revenue portion is like the free money portion of it. And what you're really doing is generating relationships through video online with people who may become your clients or prospective clients, or, you know, it generates word of mouth basically just by being you on video and helping people. So I think that's great. Yeah, this is not, I'm not the person that you come to for becoming a, um, you know, who wants to monetize strictly on YouTube and become the next YouTube star and selling hoodies and stuff like that. Like, that's a different type of model. Who I am for is more the people who want to be positioned as expert, leader, resource, authority in their niche, people who want to um, sell their own products and services, um, you know, that personal brand building side of things, lead generation, online business. That's really more the, the world that, that I live in. Oh, I think you might be muted, Jen. And there's oh. such a huge, yeah, I was totally there muted. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, it's there's okay. such a huge need for that. So it's amazing um, that you're doing that. So I think we should leave people with a couple of takeaways. Like if you were a solopreneur, author, presenter, um, coach of some sort, or a musician or an artist, and uh, you wanted to do maybe one or two things like right now today that normal mortal humans can do um, in terms of video. 
what would what would you recommend? Like, so they're gonna finish watching this and they're gonna go do it and it will have an impact on their business. So. Oh, I'll tell you to do the same thing I told my, my clients in my uh, beta program this week. Teach something live. Open up an app on your, like if you, have, if you have Facebook, you can go live there. If you have Instagram, you can go live there. If you have YouTube, you can go live there. You can go live on Twitter. You can go live, you know, on a variety of different platforms. Find a place where you can go live and go in and teach something in your niche. And doesn't have to, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to have all the, all the answers. Uh, just find one thing and teach it. And just start building that momentum, right? It's taking that step that you've been avoiding, but that's the easiest way. Again, I'm all about helping you to build your authority and income with video. Right. Well, how do you build authority? Be a teacher, teach, mentor, te help, um, be a leader, right? And what do leaders do? They get out there and they talk and they speak. Uh, so I think it's really, when you think about it, Jen, it always comes back down to strategy, yes, but speaking. You've got to get out there and talk. You know, yeah. if you're wanting to build a business and wanting to build a brand and you're not talking, you remain invisible right. in the world that we live in now. So you have to speak. So that would be the thing I would tell you. And if you want some more um, insights on, you know, okay, well, you know, I, I want to take it to the next level or whatever. That's when you connect with me. That's when you go to my YouTube channel. That's when you start to, you know, watch all my videos and watch the Facebook lives that I'm doing and get into my cash in on camera, Facebook group and consume all the content we're creating there to help you with that. Which is free but by at the, the way. the core of it, it's all free, mm -hmm. right? It, the answers are out there. You just have to come out there and seek them, but you have to start taking action. So that would be the one thing I would say, just Open up an app, even like you, you might not know how to do it or where to press. You'll learn as you go. Put a little bit of pressure on yourself. Put yourself under some pressure to get out there and just teach one thing today. Right. So impact before income. Um, strategy first. And uh, just go out and do it and take that leap. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. Gotta you have start to start somewhere. somewhere. And yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's really that, it's really that simple, but it's simple, but yet com complex for some people because there's a lot going on between the ears, right. Of, of what's stopping people from doing that and taking those actions. It's more about your, again, limiting beliefs, um, around what you're capable of doing. And so mindset is a big thing. I'm not a huge, um, rah, rah cheerleader type person. At least I don't think I am. Maybe I am. I don't know, but I, I, I'm a person who is more practical, I think, than, and maybe more pragmatic. So I'm just like, hey, just go out there and do it. Just face the fear and get it done and take that imperfect action and then come in, you know, and, and then, we'll, then we'll take it to the next step. Well, and the truth of the matter is, um, if you do do that, if you take Cheryl's advice, um, it, it gets easier every single time. Like, uh, a couple of years ago, I would have never, ever done this. I would have never interviewed you. I wouldn't be on a Facebook <laughs> Live. Uh, it's horrifying, right? Um, but I've made lots of mistakes in public, on Facebook Live, and, and whatever. It's just people see, you're just human. It happens. If they don't like it, they'll keep scrolling. And, and that is just how it is. You just got to keep going and trying, right? And taking that next step. Yeah. 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 So you're and event yeah, you have to have a thick skin. Yeah. Yeah. You have yeah. to have a thick skin and you've just got to be like, Hey, you know, yeah, that's it. It's hard because when you do get negative feedback, you know, you could have 50 glowing reviews, but the one negative feedback is the one that's going to needle you when you go to bed at night. So you have to, you do have to have a bit of a thick skin and kind of blur your eyes when you look at the comments, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, I mean, so I have a video, I have a video, I have a video on YouTube the, um, that has 420,000 views right now. So it's like that's crazy. Incredible. Uh, that's incredible. And I, yeah, it's amazing. But that on that video, a lot of the comments were complaining that I was giving too much information and too much training. <laughs> like, you know, so it's like, huh, you can't please all the people all the time. No. You just no. can't. Um, <clears throat> so you just have to keep, you know, again, have a vision for what it is you want to accomplish what your mission is, what you're really doing all of this for and barrel ahead and, and face those fears. Absolutely. I love that advice.
<laughs> okay, so your um, your event is July twentieth. Uh, it's forty seven dollars, and people can register either by texting you or going to is it workwithcheryl dot com. Um, I think that uh, the workwithcheryl dot com is for the implementation calls. Okay. If you text me, I'm going to send you the link. I think it's I, I don't think it's one of those like nice URLs. I think it's like the long one. Okay. <laughs> so I have to go back <laughs> That's okay. To what we did for that. Yeah. No, you know what? Actually, no. I think about it now. I think it's cash in. Yeah, no, you just go to cashinoncamera.com. That's it. Right. Cashinoncamera.com okay. will bring you to the $47. Yes. I'm getting myself confused. There you go. See, so many things. It's a good thing you have yeah. a map for that, a mind map. <laughs> I need a map. I, I really need a mind map. I really need one too. I think I'm going to go make one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me and rolling with the punches and just letting me uh, uh, interview you and kind of uh, hopefully share your expertise with the world and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're definitely inspiring. And thank you. I'm happy to, to keep working with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm excited to be part of your entourage and thank you so much for having me on. I think you did a great job. I know you're doing your Zoom and you're doing this to your Facebook Live. I'm so proud of you and you keep <laughs> thank doing you. the great work you're doing too. Okay. Thank you.